Hello, everyone, and welcome to the October 7th edition of the Kubernetes Localization Subproject meeting. Thank you for attending or watching on the recording. Um, I'm Abby, one of the localization um, co-leads, uh, and with my SoCo is also on the call as one of the other leads. Um, and we will be running through our agenda. Let me post that in the chat for the folks um, to see. Um, and uh, as we run through our agenda today, just remember that we are an official CNCF Kubernetes community meeting. So that means that we all uh, should be abiding by the CNCF um, code of conduct as we go through our agenda and as we interact with each other. Um, and that basically boils down to be excellent and kind to one another. So please keep that in mind. And we do have a pretty full agenda and thank you to Soko for filling out our agenda for today. Um, I'm gonna try to share my screen. Uh, so we can all see the agenda. There we go. Uh, okay, can you see my screen? Okay, so the first item up on this uh, is from the Bengali localization, and they need a new working branch uh, for Netlify preview. Um, and so I think you added this item. Is there? Oh, actually, let's start off. I forgot to start off with uh, any new folks to the call today. I see. Uh, people want to unmute themselves uh, and say hello if they're new. Okay. Um, and <laughs> if not, you can uh, just add your name into the participants uh, list. Um, so yeah, so the new, uh, the first item here is for the Bengali localization um, and the Netlify preview. Um, so I guess, Sopa, what's the, what's the action item here that we should be looking out for? Uh, yeah, so I created it. Bengali uh, localization development branch for 131 and already okay. did. And they are working on that branch currently. But uh, that branch uh, is not, uh, does not have Netlify preview. So we need to enable Netlify preview to, the, to that branch. So I opened an PR. And mm -hmm. this PR only can be uh, handled by uh, Sigdocs lead, I guess. Um, so uh, I'm actually waiting for uh, action for this uh, issue. But have I you think reached out in the, a... the channel? Sorry, sorry. I just oh, was yeah, going to say, yeah. if you brought this up to the, the Sigdocs group. In the, the channel. Yeah, uh, I I sent DMs group DMs to uh, Sigdocs lead leads. Uh, but I'm not sure. I, I don't have answer yet. And also, uh, uh, localization sub project lead. You Abigail and me should have. Uh, authority to handle this Netlify as well so that we can support localization teams. Currently, we don't have, um, uh, as I know, very few, few of Sigdox leads have this uh, configuration. Mm -hmm. Yes, so we definitely, <laughs> I know that this is something that comes up pretty frequently, so we should definitely figure it out. I thought that Dibya had uh, created an issue about uh, figuring this out a little bit better to allow people to have better access to Netlify because this, this comes up a lot. Um, and uh, maybe that was just for CNCF folks and we never really extended it to folks in the community that might need it, but let's, um, is there a SIGDOCS meeting this week? I don't know if there's one tomorrow. I think it was just last week. Um, but maybe I, we can I talk to bring this. Last week, yeah. Okay, so maybe okay. we can also add an action item and I can I can plan to mm -hmm. attend the next one and kind of raise this oh. as something that really needs to be addressed. <laughs> um, and then maybe we can try to tag, maybe just tag people in this issue um, so that they will get pinged about it because this has you know, been open for a while. Um, yeah. But yeah, so we ought to get to the bottom of that. <laughs> But thank you for 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 raising that. Um, I do. I wish I had access to help, but I do not. Um, but we should definitely get 
the right people to get access because that isn't something that should take so long um, for the team to get set yeah, up. Yeah. Also, it requires not not only the access permission. We need to how to configure the Triple Five Review for new mm -hmm. development branch. Also, uh, uh, the configuration should be carried very carefully. Actually, uh, in mm -hmm. case of Korean as a Korean localization team lead, I have some. Uh, I can configure some settings to the development branch, new development branch for Korean. Mm -hmm. So similar way we can do, uh, we can keep some permission to uh, each localization team lead. Okay, yeah. So yeah, it should give give access to to other people. To, to create yeah, a, a dev branch. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, so hopefully we can get more eyes on that and help get that set up right away and then create some way to, to set it up better in the future. Um, and so uh, next on this is naming of dev branches for localization. Um, it's so cool. This from, is this from you as well? Okay. That's right. Uh, can you um, sort of elaborate more? Yeah. In the previous meeting, I shared and asked some, some uh, opinion on uh, naming of localization development branch. Currently, mm -hmm. our uh, localization development branch looks like uh, this. We have the Kubernetes uh, version named in the development branch and the number first, second, third, like that. But it turns out we don't keep uh, keep renew, recreate, uh, create a new development branch for localization. Uh, only Korean localization team, I guess Japanese and Korean only uh, keep create development branch because they are using uh, checking outdated contents by uh, different by checking differentiate difference between development branch. That's the mm -hmm. reason why they keep uh, create new development branch. But some localization teams uh, do not use the development branch in that way. So in case of those uh, teams, they don't have this burgeoning. And I guess they can just use, keep use single development branch. For instance, uh, Bengali team can use dev uh, slash bn. It is just a single development branch and they can keep update to the development branch by syncing mm -hmm. syncing the main branch main latest, main latest because they don't use the uh, branch strategy to check outdated report so so i suggest to the how about using this way to uh, teams, for instance, Bengali team. And uh, I already shared it in the previous meeting and they somehow agreed. Uh, but I hope to share again for uh, wider uh, awareness to other teams as well. Okay, so is this... Um... Yeah, I think I think that that makes sense to have a second um, a way to name the the branches. But I guess um, so. You're saying that there's pro possibly like two strategies. So it's the way that you are doing it with having uh, the versions of the branches that you might want to have multiple different versions of the dev branches, depending on to keep track of where you are um, in your changes. And then if you want to do it a different way, like how the Bengali team is doing it, it's not necessarily have those version branches. Um, name your branches like this. 
Um, I don't necessarily see any reasons against that. I just would say that um, it's something I feel like we should have documented somewhere and written up um, so that people aren't getting too, uh, like if it's like we're codified, these are the two ways you can name your dev branches, like have it be like that. Oh, sorry, I have the, I'm sorry, I still have my reaction set up on my my monitor, which is very frustrating. But um, did you see what I mean? I don't want us to get into a place where people can just start naming the branches any sort of way without giving them more um, information about if like if you wanna do something like this, this is like how we would like your, your branches to be named. And then, um, the same thing, if you want to go this strategy, you can name your branches like this, but just sort of make it a little bit clearer so that people aren't just naming them whatever. Because I, th I think in our docs right now, we do have a recommended the, the first path um, with the, the branch versioning uh, as the recommended way. So I get, I just I would just say that we if we are want to make this change, I think it sounds great. Um, so it'll be a little bit clearer what type of branch strategy they're using um, and how the branches can continually be reused. Um, but I just would also want to make sure that we're we're writing it down so that it, it's a little more clear um, what's happening sure. and why the differences between these two use cases. Yeah, I, I think it, uh, it can be option, mm -hmm. additional option to local localization teams. Mm -hmm. and actually, some localization uh, contributors feels very hard to using the branches among branches but i have some experience in uh, cnship cloud native glossary as you know i'm mm -hmm. maintaining that uh, project as well and i uh, i actually aligned the development range for localization in this way the dev and language code way and uh, each localization team in there, they have only one development branch and they are keep mm -hmm. using it. And once they are finished their, uh, any round of their localization job, then they create a PR to merge that dev branch into main branch. Then uh, maintainers only can make, uh, it is okay to just check the, uh, a PR, including many localization works in the development branch. So mm -hmm. it, it works actually. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I think it sounds good. Do you have um, an issue that sort of describes um, these strategies a little bit more? Um, uh, not yet, but maybe we can try just to go to the Changing PR, maybe if they uh, if we okay. see the PR, then uh, they more easily understand. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and then when we have the PR for it, we can kind of yeah. ask for feedback. Okay, yeah. cool. That sounds awesome. Um, and so I did want to take a brief second uh, from our agenda because I saw that uh, Philip had uh posted a question so thank you for joining um yes and welcome so this meeting is about um talking about our localization sub project so kubernetes uh has been translated the documentation has been translated into a bunch of different languages um and this is our monthly meeting to sort of talk about documentation localization uh processes and 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 uh, strategies for handling our localization uh teams as a whole um so that's that's what we're talking about here on this call um, I don't know if you have any questions about uh, localization within the Kubernetes community, um, but yeah, so thank you for joining. Um, yeah, and that's just the aspect of Kubernetes that we're talking about today. Okay. Yeah, and if you have any more questions, please feel free to unmute yourself or um, ask them in the chat and we can we can address them as we go through. Okay. Um, the next thing is about the Farsi localization, um, which I know, uh, so we have a, a new contributor who is interested in uh, restarting that localization. So I remember there were people um, 
maybe a few years ago at this point who were interested in doing it. Um, but I don't, I think they sort of have fallen off. Um, but yeah, so if, uh, Soko, have you, have you had, I haven't, I actually checked any of the Slack messages or, or, or followed up on this, uh, this where the state of uh, this is. Um, but I know some resources have been created, so they're just looking to get restarted. Sure, I'll be glad you are, you are right. And there, uh, there was some activities before, but, uh, currently there are new uh, tentative contributors who are in interested in RC localization. And uh, the previous job uh, was not completed yet. And uh, the activity uh, is not uh, active currently. So somehow uh, to support the new uh, contributors, uh, uh, we need to uh, reinitiate it with new contributors. Also, looking for the uh, more folks who are interested in the partial localization. So, I just try to uh, mention about the partial localization uh, in this meeting so that folks who are watching this uh, meeting in record and see they are interested or not. So I just hope to share here this uh, Slack channel for patch localization. So uh, contributors who are interested in localizing the policy, uh, they, they can uh, join this channel and then uh, just mention that you are interested in. So it is just for sharing. Yes, excellent. That is, um, thank you for, for raising that. So yes, as, as Soko mentioned, if you are interested in helping contribute to uh, the Farsi localization effort, please uh, join in on the Kubernetes uh, uh, dash uh, docs dash fa uh, slack and and sort of join the team there and I think this is also probably something we can maybe bring to the wider sig docs group and sort of call out that there are a, a new effort starting up so if folks are interested just to reach uh, maybe a wider audience so thank you for raising um, this issue um, and we can I think we can move on next uh, to uh, maintaining the dutch.toml file within the community support or remove it. Um, and sort of a call out, um, I think this came from Divya to get, um, or it was raised to us by Divya to get um, some more consensus on this. Is this similar, Don't, is this so, I, I I haven't looked into this much. <laughs> um, uh, so we have uh, the Dutch.toml file, um, but we don't actually have a Dutch language lo localization, right? Is that the, the issue? Because this is also something that came up with Norwegian a couple of months ago, I think. So we have a couple of files that we're maintaining, um, but then we don't actually have a team supporting in them. So we don't really have a process on what to do in that case. Is that is that what we're sort of trying to figure out? Um, I I would say if we don't necessarily have the team supporting them, we should probably just um, remove it. I think that's what we decided last time, but um, so we don't have to worry about it. Um, and that's where I'm sort of leaning, but we can definitely create maybe a GitHub discussion or uh, something and get a little bit more uh, consensus on on for the process. So, so good. I'm not sure if you had any opinions on this. Yeah, sure. I I think we already discussed discussed on this issue. And uh, one thing missing is uh, action on this this item. Uh, we agreed mm -hmm. to remove uh, the content or content related with. Uh, current uh, the Dutch Netherlands language content because uh, that was not created by a team. Uh, the main main objective of those contents are for testing localization itself in our website. So uh, I I'm, I'm, I think we should remove first 
and uh, if if uh, if there are other interest in uh, Dutch or Netherlands language, then uh, we can reinitiate. There are very few contents inside. We I think we don't have to maintain it. Okay. Okay, I think that that makes sense. Um, I think it's just um, a policy we need to kind of codify and then use, you know, lazy consensus within the community to do it. Um, again, it's following up. Uh, I guess it's a little bit <laughs> uh, on us to get uh, the actual thing uh, followed up on. So, um, yeah, so I think we should definitely remove it and then um, just sort of write up the policy and put it somewhere uh, and get consensus on it. Um, and I guess I could take that action item, volunteer myself for things. Um, write up that we should we Okay, so uh, yeah, I'll 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 try to put something together so that we can kind of post about it and and decide and have uh, a more of a record <laughs> of it because I know I know this has come up a couple of times with the Norwegian, I think that was the other yeah. one we talked about uh, last spring. So it's definitely something that is we need to figure out. Um, and then this is something maybe similar, um, about how to maintain the localization readme, uh, dot sh file. So I'm not sure if I'm familiar with this. Okay, uh, let me explain a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, the readme is uh, in the root of our local uh, uh, Kubernetes website repository, right? And mm -hmm. other localization readme, localized readme also in the root. For instance, mm -hmm. readme dash bn ko like that. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, Junya, who are very active contributor on our website, uh, he suggested to uh, give permission on readme for reviewing and approving uh, to localization teams since. Uh, in that readme, there are uh, contents in their language, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, the Junya's suggestion from this PR uh, is uh, using some permission filtering way so that we can be uh, uh, gradually uh, set the permission to the readme's. So original suggestion was that what was that way, but uh, I also gave some opinion on uh, that way. So maybe you can check my suggestion as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I thought the managing the gradual permission is also uh, requires maintenance. So uh, also I thought we don't have to put the readme, localize the readme's uh, on the top of root directory. We can move it to the other directory and if if we can move them, move those parts to other directory, then we can put uh, the existing permission ownership in that part. So in that way, we don't have to keep maintaining the uh, specifying uh, localization reviewer and approval names. 
So if you check front uh, PR file changes, could you check the file changes in the up, this here? Up here. Yeah. File changes. So we should put <laughs> this kind of content and it is also we should maintain, right? So I hope mm -hmm. to eliminate eliminate the maintenance point by changing the directory of the localized readme to the uh, directory that localization team currently have the permission. So I suggest mm -hmm. in that way and the PR author Junya also agreed uh, with my uh, suggestion. But uh, we need more uh, opinion on that from other localization teams. So uh, Divya asked to share and get more opinion on our uh, current uh, localization sub-project meeting. OK. Yes. So I did actually remember reading about this. So I think that that suggestion um, uh, is great. Your suggestion is, is really great to make sure that things makes it a little easier. So I we, we uh, as you could probably tell by the Netlify issue earlier, trying to figure out permissions for everyone and make sure people have the right position. Permissions is, is kind of uh, a difficult uh, task and not something that I, I, I think to your point, I don't know if we want to agree, uh, pick up uh, even adding any more complexity to maintaining our permissions. <laughs> so um, I think it makes sense if we can put the the README files within the actual um, content folders uh, so that they would just inherit the permissions of the people who already have access to that folder so that it would be easier to maintain from that perspective. I do think um, just to Tim's point here about making sure that uh, the content isn't built or we have some sort of configuration to make sure it's not being built, uh, the Ruby files are not being picked up uh, when the site gets built. I think that's something that's valid we should test. Um, but yeah, so, so I think right now, I think uh, from what I can see in this, this issue or the PR is that we have some consensus among the leads about um, moving the readme files into the content folder uh, so that uh, people have more access uh, there. And then uh, we just got to make sure that we have consensus from the community. So um, so I think it's great that we brought it to this meeting. So if people watching the recording have thoughts, please comment to us. And then um, we should probably uh, also put uh, like a Slack message out into the localization channel. I'm not sure if you've done this. Sorry, I've been a little bit away. So I'm not sure if we've already done this, um, but just sort of do a little more similarly go with the, the lazy consensus model of saying, this is our plan to move to ask the localization teams to move their readme files into their repo, uh, into a different spot in the content folder, um, you know, and then just sort of handle it that way and say, this is what we're going to do moving forward. Um, if you have feedback of why this would maybe yeah. not work, um, Sorry. Uh, I, I think uh, Junya already posted the message. Okay. So cool. uh, maybe you can think it is time to time for the deadline of lazy consensus, kind of. Yes. So, yes. Sorry. Like I said, yeah. I'm a little bit behind yeah. on, on this stuff. So if, if he's already posted about it, um, I think it's fine to follow up and say this has been our kind of decision. Um, and then just sort of advocate, just say this is what we're going to move to. And this is what. Uh, Moving each little readme files into the oh, sorry oh, into the um uh content folders and then uh just making sure I'm not sure if he's anyone has done that testing making sure that doesn't happen uh that the the readme file then gets built uh, but yeah I would yeah. say we should just move forward um and either help create an issue for all of the localization teams to then move their own readme file into the folder just so that we have uh, a little bit of check to make sure people are looking at it or. Um, yeah, so I think that that makes sense um, to move forward. Um, yeah, I will share it to Junya, and maybe we need another test. And then if the test finishes, then we can go forward to move the re, uh, readme files. Mm -hmm. Okay, so first we need to test.
I take notes so I don't remember, so I don't forget what's happening. Oh my God, it's mm -hmm. so long. Okay, and then move forward with getting the localization teams. Uh, Not spelling anything right. Anyway, so yeah, so I think that that makes sense. Um, uh, yeah, I think that that makes sense. It's an easy way to clean it up. Um, I know Divya had mentioned um, that possibly some people might have, some readers might have different expectations of where to find that content, but I, I think if we can maybe put some sort of message or something somewhere um, to sort of point people to where they can find read me or more information about a given localization. I think that that might suffice. I don't I don't know if people I don't know the user's interaction with these readme files to begin with versus if they look in some other way, I think. But I think it I think it's easy enough for people to to kind of jump uh, to to the content folder for the specific localization that they're looking for. So I think that this makes sense. Yeah. So thank you for this Everybody. suggestion. Um, and hopefully we can kind of move forward. Uh, I'm making sure the test happens and any configuration needs to happen and then um, asking localizations to start moving their folders. So mm -hmm. great. Um, and so I'm not, do we have anything else we want to chat about with this, this topic? Is we all good? Okay. So this is the next item is my item and that is about testing translation tooling uh, for localization. Uh, my item in the sense that I was the person driving that and we do have a big issue about um, this so a topic. So for some historical context, there uh, has been a few localization teams who were asking uh, to test some translation tooling to help ease some of the burden of doing the translation work to help maintain their localizations easier. Uh, so we put together this issue uh, that sort of described more about what it would look like to test. Um, there's a lot of maintenance burdens and a lot of uh, things that we need to consider to make sure we we kind of know what we're doing before we sign up to support any of these technologies from the community perspective. Um, so this is the issue that sort of talks through what would need to be tested to, in order to do that. Um, the current state of that is still that we haven't actually gotten to the, the, the testing window phase. Um, I had plans to do that in the spring or early summer. And then, you know, I had I had a lot of job change things happen. Uh, so the current state is that we are looking to get this testing round started. Um, we had a lot of volunteers uh, initially. Uh, we probably have to recheck and make sure people are still available or if there's any changes. Um, if we wanted to move forward with this an initiative, I think there, there was interest before, so I, I don't imagine that's gone away. Uh, it's just making sure that people are still available to do the testing and that we have someone to be available to help sort of drive that testing. I'm not sure that I'm able to do that in the way that I was expecting to be able to do that anymore. Um, so that's sort of where we are at. It's sort of just looking for people to help drive this forward in the community. Um, and that is uh, the unfortunate mm -hmm. part of, of, of this thing right now. So so I'm not sure if you if you had much chatter about this um, from folks in the community about it, or if you had any more, any more on the, on the other updates um, about this. Yeah, uh, I personally also, personally also away from this um, translation tooling platforms issues and PRS um, uh, because I thought uh, I I still think uh, uh, using GitHub GitHub workflow in localization in Kubernetes website is very beneficial for uh, bring invite new contributors into our Kubernetes community. It is uh, al almost first step to joining uh, in deeper part of Kubernetes community as new contributors. So it is very nice way, and we currently uh, teams are very uh, good at localization with 
uh, GitHub based way. So it's not a uh, bad way currently, and it is actually working way. But uh, I I think any anyway, we can support. I mean, uh, support localization teams who are interested in using uh, translation software, translation uh, platform actually. Uh, but uh, I'm not sure we should lead uh, this kind of activity because uh, we are not planning to change all the workflow for localization. So that's the reason why I'm uh, just a uh, little bit away of this issue or PR. But uh, I, anyway, I, since I'm also one of lead, so I try to uh, give some attention on that issue. So I hope to uh, check the status myself also. And then I try to, I hope to move the uh, initiative into the team level, not the localization sub-project or SIGDOCS level. For instance, uh, there are teams or some teams who are eager to utilize those platforms, right? Then uh, okay. I, I don't hope to uh, uh, deny or ban of using that kind of platform if that platform is uh, suitable for that team, then they can utilize. So uh, in that perspective, I try to check the status for uh, this uh, issue I can. So maybe I, I also hope to think about how to deal with this uh, issue and I'm not sure we can rebuild the, the this test team again. I, I yeah, hope that's... to, yeah. Move yeah, that's right. It was sort of, it do, sorry, sorry, I'm cutting you off. Oh, um, no problem. Please. So, um, <laughs> I just was going to say that it, to do this testing was a large scale testing effort and it was going to require a lot of teams to make sure a lot of, a lot of coordination across a bunch of different localization teams to make sure that it works um, because there's a lot of different use cases and scenarios and um, changes uh, to how we do things currently. Um, so we just wanted to make sure that it was a good fit. Like as you were saying, uh, there are reasons why it is maybe not a good fit to introduce this type of tooling for all the teams because it is a good entry point, um, potential entry point for new contributors. So I think there's a lot of valid reasons to do things the way we're doing them now. Um, but like your point saying, there there is also a lot of reasons why certain teams might want to pick that up uh, um, and we should try to support them as well. Um, I would be interesting to hear uh, how to sort of put this maybe a little bit smaller or like within teams or on teams to sort of do their own testing and bring it to us because um, it's it's it would be big and I, I don't know that we always have someone to be uh, leading that because we are ourselves a very small team. Um, so, so yeah, I think that that uh, makes sense. So if you have any ideas there, um, it's unfortunately something that we, I didn't, wasn't able to give a better update about over the summer. So I know it's sort of left a little bit in the wind and I apologize for that, that was on me uh, for, for not really paying attention to it as much as I was hoping to. Um, it's a very interesting idea and I think it's sort of valid to kind of take an opportunity to test it. We just need to find a right way that is supportable by the community to do. Um, yeah. And that, uh, that's sort of the yeah. status. Also, I, uh, I, I participated to the forum in uh, open Infra days in Asia Pacific, mm -hmm. in held in South Korea, and I I was a moderator and speaker for uh, OpenStack 
localization team and with Kubernetes uh, SigDubs localization team, which is me. <laughs> I uh, I discussed with OpenStack team contributors uh, and how they are doing their uh, localization. And they have adopted the, uh, some uh, localization uh, translation platform software. But uh, in that uh, community, their problem is using the translation platform because they are hard to maintain in the translation platform itself. And they mm -hmm. are keep changing the translation platforms, then it is currently their issue. <laughs> and they asked okay. how <laughs> Kubernetes are managing in that way. And Korean localization team is so known as a very good and nice team who provide nice uh, content to Korea. So they asked to me how to handle it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And and why we don't use why Quest team don't use any translation platform. So I mentioned that it is very good to use uh, GitHub workflow in Kubernetes source code contribution way. It very, mm -hmm. was very beneficial to bring new contributors to our community and they are very agreed. <laughs> also, they gave some uh -huh. tip to, to me and uh, as I mentioned, they are using translation platform and there are lots of, not lots of, there are many translation platform softwares, as you know. Mm -hmm. uh, OpenStack, Open Infra community only use open source translation platform software, not the mm -hmm. uh, commercial one, even though yeah. some commercial translation platforms provide some free license to open source community. Anyway, they mm -hmm. are using only using the open source and the reason why they are using open source is avoiding vendor hacking. Mm -hmm. Rather than try to avoid vendor hacking and maybe also uh, applicable to our site as well if we uh, support the kind of uh, translation platforms for the localization workflow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good um some good uh feedback uh from from how other open source communities are are handling this issue because it's sort of you know we uh, are doing it our way but there are certainly other open source projects uh, who are addre addressing this issue also and they've sort of faced these challenges so um thank you for that for for sharing sort of uh, your experiences uh, talking to other open source communities because I, I think that that's sort of a, a good way to get a frame of reference on on what we're doing. Uh, and how it might look like uh, doing it uh, in production <laughs> if we were to adopt yeah. these tools um, and if it is sort of the right thing for our community. I also interesting to know, and so I don't know if we've ever done any real data collecting on how new users are getting into the community. Um, uh, and like you are saying, it's it's a good point for people to kind of learn the processes to kind of as a as a gateway into other parts of the community. But I know, and I think that that is true from what I have experienced myself in the community. Um, but I I don't know if we have any way to get any actual data uh, to kind of talk about that. Um, just that this is a random topic on to something else, but it would be interesting to get those numbers on on how on how uh, many people come through the community starting in localization and how and how that maybe enables mm -hmm. them uh, to to get into other areas. So interesting food for thought. Uh, don't know how to solve it, but it was an interesting point. Um, so yeah, so in summary, that's sort of the current state. It's that it's at the same place it was at the spring. There's a lot of concerns um, and complexities to implementing these tools. Um, and uh, it's something we're we're thinking about, but it's not necessarily, we don't necessarily have a correct path forward right now. 
Um, so if anyone listening to the recording has thoughts, please join in on the issue um, because there's a lot of interest and in lots of lots of people with opinions. So uh, thank you for, for putting this on the agenda so close to sort of talk about. Um, and I think, I think we're good to move on to our last item on the agenda, which is um, uh, add to a Add to a reporting outdated localization documents uh, by last mod difference. So is this, I think this is something you sort of showed off before. Right. Logo. So if you want to sort of go. Uh, sure. Uh, I also uh, explained this tool before and okay. I opened up PR to uh, add it to our repository, this uh, a tool. Python tool reporting outdated localization documents by last node difference. So if you use this uh, tool, uh, we can easily make some report the overall status of localization uh, outdated content based on last node difference. Also, uh, just checking the last mode. Uh, uh, checking uh, two documents are uh, one uh, localized document is outdated or not by the updated date. Uh, it is sometimes mis misleading. And currently, our website gives some uh warning banner so uh even though that content is not updated our website will show the uh, those warning message it is not good uh, way so somehow uh, we need to check uh how many cases in there and so the reason why I create I I built this tool is uh, in the the two uh, perspective. And anyway, I opened this PR and the program itself is not the issue, but uh, currently uh, it is not approved since uh, reviewers some reviewers think uh, there are. Uh, several duplicated uh, script tools. So that's the reason why this uh, uh, PR does not gain, in, gain the approval here. And yeah, I have some point why we need this kind of tool. It is uh, different with other tools and we can keep improving once we um, um, uh, upload this kind of tool, uh, this tool can be updated by other localization teams as well. So I'm waiting for approval for this uh, PR, but uh, it turns out I feel that uh, who can merge this kind of PRs because it is very related with uh, technical point considering the content is program, uh, Python program. So, uh, but some other perspective, it is it is uh, for localization, right? So maybe localization need also should care of this kind of item. So I thought one uh, group cannot uh, merge this, approve this PR. So I guess that's the reason why this PR is not uh, gaining the approval yet. So uh, Tim suggested to share it and other localization teams or localization members are uh, agreed on this uh, uh, script then uh, he also think this can be mergeable. So the reason why, it's the reason why I bring it again to our 
uh, meeting. Yes, thank you. Um, thank you for sharing and thank you for putting this together. Um, as kind of, I was reading through some of Tim's uh, messages and I kind of fall into the first bullet point here, uh, which is I don't do enough localization work uh, to tell uh, if this is uh, very useful for folks, but it seems very useful. Um, and I know that this has been an issue um, that uh, uh, we're you're seeing a message on some of the Korean localization docs uh, that is inaccurately saying that the, the content is outdated when really it is not. Um, so I guess uh, maybe my follow-up point is, uh, do you know of another localization team where this has been uh, an issue that they've sort of brought up and, and thought about? I know we talked about this issue a little bit, um, but I don't remember if there was anybody else who chimed in the last time we talked about it uh, to say that they were also seeing this, um, because they might be um, a, a yeah, good yeah. place to ask for, like a first place to reach out, like a more focused place to reach out for for testers um, if they've already noticed this as an issue. Um, uh, I don't I don't know if you already have like specifically reached out to any of the Slack teams or localization channels specifically about getting more testers and more feedback on it. Um, that that might be a little a way to kind of get a little bit more uh, like yeah, I, I remember, I, I, for some reason, I feel like the Brazilian yeah. team talked about it, but I don't remember if that <laughs> I might have made that up in my head, um, but they might be a good place to start. Um, yeah, several several teams mentioned that. Uh, this issue. So that's the mm -hmm. reason why we, Abby, actually you created the issue about the, the mm -hmm. uh, outdated one. So from that issue, I created this PR. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it is kind of a PR to resolve your issue. And uh, the the content the program or the report itself is not perfect. It cannot be perfect, right? Uh, mm -hmm. but somehow I think it is stated to uh current current status is uh just enough for uh checking those issues. So also uh several folks already uh, interested or share their idea it is very beneficial to mm -hmm. localization teams. So I already gained some uh, plus <laughs> from others. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I mean, I think, I, like I said, the, the tool seems very useful. And if, if maybe you can get some folks to maybe just chime in on uh, the PR there, then maybe we could get a little, get it merged in a little more, more easily. Um, because I, I think it will be useful and provide some value to teams. Um, but again, it, 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 sort of to your point of, uh, who is the people who approve this, uh, uh, in the wild is sort of, uh, right back to our permissions issue of who, I mean, other people will have permissions, but who do we get to look at these type of PRs, um, when we do have them? So it's sort of, tied in a lot to our, our conversations around pro, uh, a common problem uh, of, of who is the permission people and, and how do we sort of manage that uh, uh, in the wild. So I think it's really a valid thing to raise for those two points and because I think it's a useful tool and then also kind of a, a, a broader question on how we should focus these conversations to get per permissions. Um, but yeah, if you if you know of folks, maybe you can get them to kind of chime in on the PR um, with their support or their thoughts. Um, uh, I actually had legitimately forgotten I created this issue. So this is kind of funny, but trip down memory lane. Um, but yeah, so I think it's really valuable. Um, and thank you for doing your work on that tool. Um, I think there's a couple of things going through this agenda of follow-up action items on, on, on just sort of blasting out the community with with some more messages, with with uh, more of the finalization of, of, of what we sort of talked about here. Um, which I've taken some of those action items uh, through the agenda, and I will follow up on them. Um, but that is sort of the end of our agenda for today. Uh, did you have anything else you wanted to chat about? It's just seems to be just you and me today on the call. Um, but we still had a whole hour worth of the conversation. So uh, really good. So thank you for putting together this agenda. Um, did you have anything else you wanted to touch on today? That's all for me. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so this was our October meeting. Our next meeting will be, let me check my calendar. 
uh, November 4th, it looks like. Um, and so hope to see uh, you there if you're watching the recording. Um, and in the meantime, hopefully we can kind of move, make, move some of these initiatives forward. Um, yeah, and we'll check in next month. So let me stop the recording.